<laughs> so, um, you ever take one too many Adderalls in the middle of hyperfixating on a geometric shape? Cause I can suddenly pull off a front tuck? My god, I should overdose more often. Sonic the Hedgehog, he's blue with a toot and is a mass media mascot I've never talked about before. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, he's actually Lapis. Introducing you to Sonic the Sound Barrier Outlaw would be like me teaching about the existence of measles. They're both already beloved worldwide phenomenons, so set to elaborate on. He's a cheeky little bitch, is And there is not a goddamn thing on the planet that combines video gaming with speed like this blue boy. Oh, I'm only kidding, I suppose. Oh, for GX is the world's first browser built for gaming, and for pioneering such a browser, it hits the nail on the head on how to do this shit right. With GX Control, I'm able to have the billions of tabs I need open in addition to gaming damn hard, and if that wasn't enough, this thing lets you limit the amount of CPU and RAM usage Opera GX uses, keeping your performance personalized and uniquely ideal. And in addition, this behemoth comes with a built-in network limiter for when you want things also buttery smooth when it comes to propelling performance that much more. And hey, if there's one thing I'm a sucker for, it's presentation, and sweet Jesus does GX deliver. By default, it's equipped with this black and crimson neon aesthetic I freaking love, but even at that, this thing is customizable as HE double hockey sticks with a plethora of themes, wallpapers, and colors to boot in order to get this thing to look just the way your heart desires. Uh, dude, one of my favorite presentations features here is the built-in sound effects, especially the crisp clacking sound when you type. Oh, and hey, if this thing wasn't gaming oriented enough, the GX Corner is your one-stop shop for deals, new releases, and a plethora of gaming news, including a built-in calendar for upcoming titles. Opera GX also comes fully packaged on mobile devices as GX Mobile, so goddamn is there no excuse not to install this absolute delicacy of a browser. Grab Opera GX today for free, yo, links in the description. Sonic is a cyclops though, that's one thing a browser can never be. I mean... Unless. Real talk though, there's been hella hype for this fella as of late. The reveal trailer for the newly unveiled Sonic Frontiers open world romp. The first official look at his second feature length film. Yeah, to hell with any of that, let's talk about the one topic I publicly slandered. EXE games, they are a genre. Primarily consisting of jump scare ridden, asset stolen, hyper realistic blood having nightmares, all spawned from the one and only Sonic.exe, a game chart listing based on the creepypasta of the same name. Now I've talked about Sonic.exe before, as well as EXE games in general, so what better way to milk this incredibly obscure subgenre? of indie gaming to asphyxiation than to scream about the sub-sub-genre of Sonic.exe fan games. These freezer pops are a dime a dozen, and most of them are more or less the same song and dance in it. If by some ungodly chance you are unaware of the events of Sonic.exe, it is the Minecraft mob spawner of the EXE game tropes. It's just a five minute walking simulator with an absolutely superfluous amount of blood to indicate that this is the part where you scream into your webcam. Is it a good game? No. Is it a goofy as hell cult classic? Yes. I mean, despite how admittedly crude the thing is, it's gone on to inspire a lot of fan works, custom Sonic.exe OCs, stories, and in particular, fan games. And suffice to say, to be fair, not that I was expecting the next mania with any of these, but I've had a difficult time finding a single Sonic.exe tribute with any kind of real polish or unique flair. More often than not, driving into the ground what trophy garbage that original game did employ, as opposed to doing something actually creative and interesting with the core potential of taking that base concept of a spooky Sonic the Hedgehog PC port and drawing something fresh from that. Sonic PC port. No, 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 no. Ah, there we go. This little bugger, led by at John Khan Off, is technically a remake of a fan game with the same name, originally developed by at Loser Makes Games. For simplicity's sake, though, while I will be talking primarily about the remake, I'll be referring to it as simply Sonic PC port, because it'd be redundant to mention it's a remake if I don't talk about the original game any further than in this paragraph, which I won't. Sonic PC port does, at the moment, only exist as a short form demo, but despite that fact, remains to be possibly the most refined Sonic. Sonic.exe fan game I've come across, for a multitude of reasons. Being a demo though, there's not a whole lot to discuss and talk about here, but regardless, I think it may well be a fairly important stepping stone in the whole Sonic.exe scene, if every other tribute I've ever seen is anything to go by. Most of these things just attempt to either recreate the original 5-minute Sonic.exe romp with a couple unique spanners in the works, or are several hour long reimaginings I have yet to find an in-between. Today, I want to get into what this tribute and others like it mean for the Sonic.exe fan game craze, as I'm a big believer in the fact that if it's executed correctly, there's a lot you can do with this kind of horror. While the idea of taking a pre-established game or IP and making it all spooky is a trope that's been skinned, milked, burned, winded, tortured, flogged, stabbed, and lightly annihilated to ultra mega death and back, whenever I do see this kind of thing done right, it's wonderful. And I'd love to start seeing more games and developers touch on the kinds of aspects and ideas I think could really give the whole cute thing gone spooky genre more of a reason to actually exist. Anyway, enough bullshit, I want to point and cry the hedgehog with murderous intent. So, after an ominous disclaimer, we're thrown into Hellzone, Act 1, met with a 
slowed down green hell zone theme, and Tails is the playable character here. Other than that weird shit, it's peaches and gravy as usual, till the screen cuts out and we're met with a formal greeting, and an actual Genesis error message, which I certainly like, working on the letters EXE too, it's a nice touch. Cut back to hell, and for a Sonic.exe tribute, it is peaches and gravy as usual. What I really like here though is that the section begins with a segment completely untouched, only with Tails walking over the perimeter, giving a sprite work a subtle switch up, a look of genuine concern and upset for both his walking animation and idle sense. The demo is also like, always acutely aware of the smallest change in situation by the way, and will update Tails' look to match accordingly, it's a really sweet detail. I like how a tad later, once fairly cool pixel art McGee flashes on screen for a single frame, the sky turns a fiery orange and the vegetation looks to turn dead, Tails closes his eyes beginning to tear up just a little more at the decimation of his home, it's definitely a cool detail to see. Speaking of sentences that make me sound like a sadist to say out loud, the usually vibrant flora is now disgustingly lively, featuring tiny snapping mouths and eyeball sunflowers that react to whether you're underneath them or not, that's fun wasn't it? And then this poor mofo, so visibly consoled by the sight of Sonic in front of him only for his expression to dampen as he realises the inevitable before being whisked away to a burning angel island zone. Horribly distraught at this point, point mind you, and physically pointing in the direction he wants you to take him, out of pure desperation. Cut to and from, some classic serial killer cut and paste, and back to meat plants, baby! <laughs> Carnivore coconuts, degloved flesh arms, and peepers by the dozen, what's not to loathe? This is a reimagining of the infamous chase scene, with the chance to actually outrun Sonic here this time. And you've got a generous amount of chances to do so, the game flashing an increasingly less shrouded Sonic on your screen each time you die, having him appear closer and closer for shits and giggles, I don't know, nothing happens when you get a game over, I checked. Once you do manage to skedaddle the quilled cocksucker, however, and Tails is hovering to solace, this happens! And yeah, it's kind of heartbreaking. Our Tailless Tails makes haste trips up, Sonic passes him like a stupid idiot. Tails runs the other way and Sonic snatches him up, only to... Only we'll to have another authentic feeling Genesis Corruption sneak its fat ass way into this gig, hell yeah! I might be totally real with you though fam, it's fairly cool and executed very nicely. <laughs> but that ain't shit my guy, cause the game crashes and once it's reopened, we play the classic Sonic 1 menu rodeo, with just a slight enough tweak to Sonic's design to have the chef feel a tad too unusual. Then we get a little animated sequence of this whole getting closer, only to totally break the ever-loving shit out of the Sega startup, landing us ultimately on an error screen, informing us that we may be playing a pirated copy of the game. You think? Yeah, and all's absolutely liquid till the game creates and opens a notepad file in front of the game window and dragging it away to find the text gone and an eyeless Sonic staring right back at us telling us to stop reading the file and to play the game like the scary bitch he is. And it just keeps going fam, messages and messages to the point of him spamming I am God in notepad after notepad after notepad and contorting his expression and shaking the goddamn game window before finally succumbing to the fact that this is, in fact, indeed, after all, a 10 minute demo. And that is the Sonic PC port extravaganza, you chumps. So? What do we think? Sonic PC port is a hella solid reimagining of the opening moments of the classic Sonic.exe romp and generously elaborates on what truly makes the classic Sonic games unsettling, absolutely in part due to tapping into authenticity. Using an actual Genesis illegal instruction error message, having the game's visuals and audio bug out several times, and the anti-piracy crash screen all look and feel like they could have really been pulled off on official hardware, and that's the kind of stuff I love and desperately want to see more of in an even spookier setting even. When manipulated in the right way, it's it's wicked to see what people can do with this kind of thing, PC port in particular, absence of cheap jump scares or shock value, resorting to using a combination of the goings on of a haunted Sonic esque Eldritch horror and legitimate feeling game corruptions and error screens outside of the classic spooky Sonic shtick to deliver something truly intriguing. Is the gameplay still absent? Yep. But I'd argue that the tiny sliver of an experience that this thing does provide is riddled with polish, which all the more makes up for and is all the better for it. Not just in the heightened realism of the thing, but that extra boost in pixel art, those additional details and the situational animations that help to convey the emotion and tone of the scene so much more. However, in terms of a playable game with goals and objectives and incentives, Let's be real. Most of, if not all, .exe games are incredibly linear, scripted experiences, but I'm beginning to wonder if that's even inherently a bad thing. Having something much shorter form in a more controlled environment means that, sure, in this context, you are sacrificing a truckload on the gameplay side of things. But in turn, this means you can perfect each gameplay scenario to your heart's content, and I think PC Port is a wonderful example of that, like with Tails' animations. The less situations a player can end up in means more opportunity to fine-tune what situations they do trip into. Is an assumption I'm making 
everything based on what game design knowledge I've accumulated in my fat juicy brain tech over the years, but I really do think that sentiment holds true here. The PC port ain't the first to deliver on all this. Okay, the inspiration for some of the events that occur over the course of the demo were pretty clear to me, with fourth wall breaking and video games being nothing new. Taking advantage of creating new files, changing backgrounds, and otherwise interacting with the player outside of the core executable, for example, all having been elements included in games like One Shot, which exploits possibly the best usage of fourth wall breaking I've ever seen in a video game in my whole entire life. Highly recommend that hot wet slap in the arteries of an experience. But that kind of creative, thinking outside the box mentality PC Force employs of what it admittedly little of that it does have, I feel would work fantastically for the holy XE game craze. Hell, small scale indie horror flicks in general, I'd love to see do more than just, haha, uh -huh, you know, ripping the user's name from their PC to talk quote unquote directly to them. Which Fair, Sonic PC port does include that tried and true shit nugget of a trope, but especially in the context of what it's trying to be, I'd argue it's too much of an iconic piece of Sonic.exe to leave out of a fleshed out reimagining. Same goes for some familiar music here and there, as well as the Kefka laugh. From the looks of things, I'd like to think the pendulum is beginning to be swung in the right direction for all things fast, blue, and deadly, with a boiling pot of authenticity, polish, and creative fourth wall breaking to boots, and seriously, more power to PC port for that. Even still, I feel like using those elements in a well structured, fully playable game would be so much fun to explore as a concept. An entire world revolving around this stuff would make me shit myself, I think. Wouldn't even have to be Sonic related. Hell, I think seeing an original fabricated retro IP taken and messed with to the extreme Sonic often is in these scenarios, with some proper design work and refinements would make for a downright sick game. Or an asset swapped garbage fire if you're not careful. But hey, I'll take what we got for now, and aside from the odd two hour long romps that somehow exist, while well, all these games do more or less hit the same beats as the original game, at least from what I've messed around with, the same as these things can get, none of them ever feel like they're cut from the same cloth. And it's definitely the very least interesting to see so many people's various interpretations of such a simple premise. It's kind of like how I look at the majority of FNAF fan games I play, even if fundamentally most of them follow a very similar formula. It's always neat to check out how each game is essentially personalized to each dev. Like Sonic.era for instance, this thing's a freaking one-to-one -one to the original Sonic.exe, yet I still think it's ultimately pretty decent. Real quick, it's unique in the fact that it derives its theming from the lost 1990 Tokyo Toy Show Sonic 1 beta, acting as a fairly faithful recreation of the thing to kick it off with, aside from the whole this. What I like about this thing though is, even if it wasn't intentional, that merely the idea of featuring a famous lost beta may be unsettling in itself. With the direction the internet has taken in recent years and basing a lot of small scale horror on often decades old lost media recordings, the scratches, fuzziness, glitches, and imperfections of old analog and game console footage can to a point more from acting as just a stylistic and practical way to indicate a certain time period to then unveil whatever scary shit it pleases, into becoming almost a synonym for platform for horror, heavily due to to the fact that creepy online media nowadays is so often presented in this way. Under the guise of a scratched up tape or a long lost game prototype. Or both. Screw it. And with so many people taking advantage of the limitations of older hardware to create a horror experience, a beta sonic prototype featuring early designs that we're less familiar with hones in on that fear of the unknown, like yeah it's green hell, but having such a faithful recreation of a slightly different version of what we've come to know and love is just the perfect setup to keep us on our toes from the very beginning, with this thing even complete with Tails' adventure of Sonic the Hedgehog design, and a couple fake yet convincing beta designs for Knuckles and Robotnik for that dash of authenticity. But just sudden know what, screw that junk, cause honestly there's decidedly far more to the trend than solely the video games here. Truthfully, from what I've gathered, a huge chunk of what's keeping the Sonic.exe community alive over a decade after that original creepypasta's publishing date to the billions of takes on what an evil infused Sonic entity could feel, behave, and act like in an authentic game scenario. Or, in layman's terms, Sonic.exe OCs. You don't have to build an entire playable fan game to do that, and while something like PC Port is honestly a great way to exercise and showcase what your spooky ass Sonic OC would and could do in the classic Sonic the Hedgehog scene, the plethora of custom variations of the shape shifting demon slash paranormal entity slash otherwise otherworldly horror taking the form of video game sensation Sonic the Hedgehog can be fun to mess around with on their own. There's a wildly decent number of standout picks of the litter from the brief browse I've had on the topic, and whether it's down to the design or the concept behind the OC, there's certainly some cool twists on the classic hemolacria ridden poo poo eater we've all come to know and love. But hey, nothing beats chucking any one of these bitches into a walking simulator and staring intently at just what silly sausage hijinks it'll get up to, and I think doing so is the best way to elaborate on your OC as a whole, with the more out there fourth wall breaks and gameplay scenarios to play with the better. Like throwing a stick of dynamite into a bath full of eggs, who knows what might happen, Ooh. So, in conclusion, are Sonic.exe fan games doomed to be whole wanker dog shit forever? 
Yeah, maybe, I don't know. But with Sonic PC port looking as promising as it does, I honestly don't think it'd be too unreasonable of an ask to want to see the kinds of things it does in more of this kind of media sometime soon. What with emulating actual or at the very least convincing enough looking error screens, glitches, and messages that it'd be feasible to find on an actual Genesis. And with shit like this in existence, yeah, Sega's creepy ass takes on otherwise pretty mundane info make the idea of exploiting that kind of shit in an intentionally scary game all the more reasonable. After all, exploiting what already creeps us out is pretty pretty much all the horror is. People have been doing this kind of thing in short bursts anyway, what with the whole anti-piracy screen trend from a year back, so to get to witness that kind of thing in an interactive environment would be... But we have just spent the last 15 minutes hyperfixating on an incredibly specific genre of indie games after another afternoon of Adderall. What else am I gonna do with the six tons of blood bags I just back ordered off eBay? Game Jolt, here I come!